Welcome to the Miniatures Papers. Today we're going to talk about Reaper Bendy Swords and how to fix that issue. So I want to talk about Reaper Bendy Swords and how Reaper Bones has these things called Bendy Swords. And let me tell you what I'm talking about. So let's say this figure here uh, has a nice scythe, but the scythe is all bent out of shape. And they bend. And they twist. And this is not secure whatsoever. Now, if you're playing a D&D &D and you're not painting your miniatures and just want to take this out, just there you go. Just move it around, don't remove the mold lines. Okay, I guess it would work. And that's fine. But um, if you want to do something about this, it's super easy. Let's check it out. Alrighty, so uh, here we have a miniature from the Reaper Bones Graveyard uh, expansion pack. First thing I do is remove that base, um, which was really easy. I pre-removed that base. Uh, it's not that easy that I just showed you there. I just, you know, put it in there because I forgot to record when I uh, removed that base. But it is super easy, and I did it with the X-Acto blade. Just make sure you use a brand new one. I used a brand new X-Acto blade uh, for that cut. Doesn't have to be the X-Acto brand, but uh, I like them. And now uh, these are bendy swords and bendy weapons, and I really despise the bendy stuff. Only because I'm going to put a nice paint job in there and I don't want it to, you know, crack or whatever. I want it to look cool and uh, not really like a toy. So here is a hard plastic weapon that also came with the Reaper Bones 3 set. Not the, not the expansion, but the actual core set. Uh, so I thought it was just, you know, uh, a no-brainer to kind of just convert these. And I wanted to see how easy or hard it was to convert something uh, or change out these weapons with Reaper Bones. So I saw this nice sword and this cute, cool, um, I don't know what they're called. Morning, is that a Morningstar? A hammer? I don't know. And uh, I thought it would look cool with those there. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of dry fitting it. I'm kind of looking to see if... Uh, if the shaft is too long or what, which I think that shaft is too long for the sword, which I'm going to have to cut back just a bit. And, um, yeah, I just having some fun with this. <laughs> this is pretty cool miniature, if you ask me. It has the, um, it has all the things you possibly could want out of a death figure. Actually, I wonder if I could proxy that for, you know, one of the kings, uh, or, or a general or something like that because he is this lich is is no joke it looks like a king to me and um who knows i haven't more game yet so i might just use all my miniatures for D, &D anyway uh gw and all the rest and if that's the case then it doesn't really matter what i use really but this was a cool miniature I i'm really looking forward to painting this up and uh, in order to do that, then the bendy swords have to go. And look how easy it is just to, to cut straight through these Reaper bones. Now, that's a good thing for me, who, you know, pretty much has okay uh, control with an X-Acto blade and has been developing brush control and has been developing control with um, power tools like a Dremel tool and stuff like that. So I've sort of gotten used to it after years and years of, of using these these equipment, and I'm getting better at it. So um, it is quite easy for me to, to cut. Now, if you're not that great with um, cutting these things uh, using exacto blades, the balance fold might be is that you can cut or hack or chop a whole piece of your miniature off, and then you know there's uh, well, I, I guess you can green stuff stuff. Green stuff stuff, yeah. You can green the stuff you chopped off back in or any gouging that uh, possibly happened. But, you know, gouging in this case with a dead miniature, it could be a battle scar. It doesn't have to be something bad. 
but just be careful. Use uh, caution. And now he's bare-fisted. And that was quick. See how quick that was? I wonder what an unarmed attack for a lich would be. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. Anywho, um, now I'm going to get rid of all these pieces. And these pieces are so sturdy. I mean, really sturdy. Like, I'm not worry about cracking them or breaking it at all. And that's one of the beauties about Reaper Bones is that they just are so sturdy. And they're so... They're made inexpensively, so um, if I mess one up, I am not really, you know, I don't know, I'm not worried about it, really, I'm not. Uh, however, if I had Nagash and um, I messed that up, then, you know, that's an expensive model, and uh, no. <laughs> so, actually, I don't think I'm, I'm ready to paint Nagash yet. I have to get up to a certain level of decency before I tackle a project that large. Namely, paint everything else I have for my death army before I even touch Nagash. And then there's nothing else. And if there's absolutely nothing else for me to paint for the death army, Nagash is going to be the last. The... the um, Peace de resistance, the, um, the pinnacle, the zenith, if you will, of the collection and the last piece, the tribute uh, to the entire army. All right, so uh, dry fitting the sword, really nicely done. Oh, wait a second. Yep. And once it, I get a real good gauge for it, it seems that it goes easy. I, I make sure I sand the contact point because then the, the glue has something to bite into. And I usually pin these things, but I have taken, taken apart, I've been playing with Reaper Bones since I have the, uh, the Kickstarter, and I've been ripping off connected pieces that have gaps. Um, because I looked at it and I saw the gap and I said, there's no way that these pieces are fused together with the Reaper Bones. And you know what I found out? They're not. They're actual separate pieces that someone glued together and kind of put into the package. And it took a lot of ripping and yanking to get those pieces out. So my thought is, is that they use super glue to kind of put it together any which way. Because this way, when they come out of the box, you can be able to use them for your table. They also figured that hobbyists will just take the stuff apart and, and build it and fill in the gaps. And, you know, you know, that's what hobbyists do. That's how we do. But, um, but yeah, I ripped those pieces apart for trolls and stuff like that. I just built a, a graveyard golem, and I put that up on, on Facebook. And I'm really surprised because it was like a speed paint, zenithal highlighting, a, a sketch tile, kind of uh, painted up really quickly and um, put a couple of washes in there. And, you know, it was pretty cool. It really was. And, you know, all that, all that. And it came out really well, but I had to rip those pieces apart in order for it to, to fit nicely. And once I fit the pieces in nicely after I ripped it apart, I put in um, some green stuff around the contact point. When I pushed it in, it kind of like filled in any gap that was there. And all I had to do was shape it. It was really, really easy. Okay, so this one I decided not to go with um, pinning but since I ripped apart the other uh, miniatures that came with super glue on it, I figure that bond is so tight. And I don't know, maybe it's the plastic that it's being used or something like that. The glue re really, really, really is awesome. And Zip Kicker is awesome too. I think even our figure agrees with the fact that Zip Kicker is pretty awesome. Because uh, for those of you who don't know, Zip Kicker by Zap is... Uh, a drying accelerator for your super glues. And uh, nobody wants to wait with glue. Trust me, I've been building models since I was little, car models and military vehicles since I was about 11 years old, 12 years old. And I've been, I've been, that's been on and off for my whole entire life. And I'll tell you one thing I was around before I ever knew for, for many, many years. Uh, in, the, in the hobby of building miniature thing or scale things. And I never knew about uh, Zip Kicker. And let me tell you, 
I had to sit there many, many hours, many, many hours, just waiting. I wasted my life holding pieces together, waiting for it to dry, blowing on it, leaning them up against things so this way it would hold it erect so I don't have to worry about it. Zip Kicker is heaven sent. So getting back to the strength of these things, um, I am not worried about the sword at all because of the pieces and the way they, they fit with the, the, the pre-fitted or the pre-built ones that came in the package and how strong their bonds are. I'm not even worried about it. Now, there is a thing uh, I've heard, and I need to try this out, that if you take super glue right, or something that's super glued and you put it in the freezer and freeze it, that it, it'll just pop off, like the pieces will come apart. So. I need to make the experiment where I take a Reaper Bones figure that have all these horrible gaps and then it become pre-assembled, throw it into the freezer and see if the glue comes off. And this way I can just, you know, put some green stuff on it, fill in the gaps one, two, three, and be done with it. A lot of people are intimidated by Reaper Bones and, and will not pull the trigger on Reaper Bones. Now, I was one too. When I started building figures, I loved metal, metal miniatures. I love them. I didn't like that you couldn't really see the gaps until after you primed them, and you really couldn't see uh, any of the mold lines until after you primed them, well, most of them. And I didn't like uh, using metal files with them because then it'll leave a whole bunch of gashes and scrapes and stuff that you kind of didn't want. And I didn't realize that plastic was a lot better. But back then, a metal figure was pretty cool. <laughs> and once you primed it up, it was amazing. So... But this material here, a lot of people are intimidated by. I mean, I say, you know, I went in and I went in. I was so happy with this, uh, these figures here that I went ahead and supported the Kickstarter for. And uh, I'm pretty in deep with that as well. And I am expecting a whole plethora of things. One thing I didn't get were all the large dragons. And I'll tell you, if this goes well, then, you know, maybe one day I'll just pick up, you know, a whole bunch of dragons. The only thing about dragons that I'm not too crazy about is if you have to paint each and every scale. If you really want to do a good job on it, then you have to highlight every single scale and really pick them out. And it's just like the nature of the beast. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Uh, all right. Now, now time for the hammer. Morning star thingy. I don't know what it is but um but it looks kind of cool out of all the other uh stuff that i picked out from uh the reaper bone set i thought this was pretty cool so it's gonna go on the other hand he's gonna dual wield because you know what it, he's a lich it's not like he's worried about the fence I and mean, then what do you do stab him to death he's dead you know there, there's no coming back from this i think he knows that He's not look. For, he's not out for his pretty looks. I mean, he doesn't want to scar his face or anything like that, does he? Yeah, no. He's all about attack, in my opinion. There is no room for defense. Who needs to defend if you're already dead? Plus, he's a king, so he's like bad butt. He needs to show everybody, hey, hey, I can take a lick and keep on going. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but yeah, no. I really like this fig. This fig is amazing, in my opinion, and it is going to go well with my death uh, miniatures. I already have ideas with the base where I'm going to have, like, power coming up from the floor. You know how you're so powerful that items on the floor start drifting upwards? That kind of power? Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going for with this, some kind of power. And all around them, like... Home, holy and or unholy or whatever uh, kind of power is going to come off. Now, you see, look, I am flopping this miniature around to see if a piece falls off. And it doesn't. And I'm trying to knock it back and forth. And no, I mean, I'm not trying to pitch it at 100 miles an hour towards a towards a fan or anything like that that's running <laughs> with the grade off. No, I'm not doing that. But if I'm putting it on the, the game table and it falls over, I'm not worried about it, it popping off at all. Uh, if somebody bumps into it while reaching for their fig or dice or whatever, and it falls over, it, I don't see it breaking, even without the pins. So I'm not even worried about it. And if something bad happens, it's Reaper Bones. They're tougher than nails, I'll tell you. Hey, forget about it. You bought yourself a quality product. And speaking of which, the amount of miniature 
for uh, the amount of miniatures you get for the price is just, you, you can't beat that. And so if you go to play campaign and you play with uh, miniatures, and you play D&D &D with miniatures, then um, I don't think there's a better deal out there at all. So yeah, now I'm going to abuse this fig as much as possible, see if, uh, throw it around, jostle it up, and see if uh, any of the pieces fall off. They don't. You know, and I will continuously beat up this miniature throughout uh, this build session. And the reason why is because I want to show you that um, that it's pretty tough. And it is really, really tough. All right, uh, time to put on the bottom piece. Now, I'm going to clip off some pieces. And I recommend you remove all the mold lines before, you know, doing this. But, you know, this is my first conversion, and honestly, I think it's going along really well. I'm really happy with how this is coming out. Yep. I think it's amazing. I think that, you know, my first attempt, and it's all because I get, you know, nervous I'm going to mess things up. And Reaper Bones, you know, and I... and and. The reason why I can convert this and do it confidently is because it's Reaper Bones. It's because it's not an expensive model that I'm going to freak out about. And, you know, honestly, it's just go for it. And I guess if I build up my confidence with Reaper Bones, I can go back to GW stuff and, you know, really go in confidently and come up with a, a great product. Because if when you do things confidently, uh, usually it comes out better. I don't know how, why that is. I guess because your strokes for the uh, the brush strokes are more confident and you can see that it translates into it. Alrighty, my camera had died. So, you know, here I am again trying to glue in that bottom piece of the uh, hammer and or morning star or whatever it's called, morning hammer, uh, hammer star, <laughs> I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm gluing that in right there and and remember, do you want to sand down the pieces in order to do that? So first conversion so far. So look, I am really abusing this miniature. I even dropped the glue on it. And still, you know, all this, and I am as clumsy as all get out. I am older and clumsy and my handshake and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm doing it. So it's not really too much of an issue. You're not going to have an issue trying this yourself. And uh, the risk is kind of low which I think is awesome because me being intimidated by my own shadow when it comes to miniature stuff, going in confidently and converting and chopping off bits and putting other bits in and like, whatever, just do it, right? I don't care. Just make it happen, right? This looks cool, so that's what I'm going to do. And bendy swords, oh, I do not like the bendy swords. So, hey, I figured if I don't like the bendy swords, let me do something about that. And um, you can. It is so easy to do. This is not a difficult thing. And in one session, one hobby session, not even a half hour into it, because all this is real time, not even a half hour, what is it, 20 minutes? 20 minutes I converted this piece, and it is super easy. <laughs> super easy. 20 minutes in, and you got yourself a piece. Now, I did uh, Zenithal highlight this off camera, uh, and if you don't know what it is, um, Senato is when you paint it. I painted it black, and then I took white, and I put it up on top. And that will create all the highlights on top, the bright spots on top, and the shadows coming from underneath, so the light sources from the top. Now, you can vary the light source, uh, light source in different angles, 45-degree angles if you want, in the front, so this way the, the back's in the shadow, uh, or a 45-degree angle all on top, so it would have like a ring around it. You can, you can play around with Zenithal highlighting a lot and uh, come up with various effects. Now, uh, I painted another miniature from Reaper, and I did sketch style painting, and that's when you have that Zenithal priming, and it is a high contrast. And then you just, you know, reinforce the shadows, reinforce the highlights, and then just glazes, and um, washes, and dry brushing, and some edge highlighting, and there you go. You have yourself a nice little miniature. I'm probably going to do the same for this. I think all my Reaper bones, I'm not going to kill myself over. That means I'm not going to really paint it for competition. Uh, except for, you know, one day when I go over to ReaperCon and enter there, I think I'll take a Reaper miniature there and see if I can come home with a uh, Sophie. I've always wanted a Golden Sophie, ever since Golden Sophies were a thing. And that's before the Crystal Brush. 
golden selfies were the thing and amazing. So cool mini or not is awesome, but Reaper is also awesome. And Reaper was the miniature company when I was growing up. And GW was there, but it was always the most expensive wargaming thing out there. And the figs, the older figs, I don't know. <laughs> like the clown Nagash and stuff like that. Mm, not so cool. But this, oh my gosh, this would kick the clown Nagash's butt. Maybe not in stats wise, but in definite coolness wise. And for me, that's what matters the most. Oh goodness. So, chuck the base, have a new base. And I'll Zenithal prime, prime this up. So all you need here is um, a tough miniature. Uh, and all you need is a couple of har some swords that are not bendy and cut up, cut it up. Reaper Bones lends to it very well. And you get yourself a cool miniature. See? That's how easy it is. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. All you need is, well... A couple of hard plastic weapons that you can get online, or uh, I got these from the Reaper Kickstarter, Reaper Bones 3. Uh, so you can go from Bendy Sword this to a ready Zenithal Primed, uh, ready to go miniature that looks pretty bad butt, if you ask me. I'm looking forward to doing a tutorial on how to paint this guy up, but for now, know that if Bendy Swords are an issue, they don't have to be a stopping point for Reaper Bones. Well, if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.